Hey guys, I got a question today about soldering irons and which one's the best one. So I figured I'd just make a video real quick and show you guys some of the differences between various soldering irons on the market and what to look out for, especially if you want to seriously get into this hobby or professional rework. There are some big differences in soldering irons. <clears throat> so this one here is a traditional soldering iron. It's got a temperature adjustment, which in my opinion is not completely necessary, but um, it's got a sleeve right here and the tip, and the tips change out by unscrewing this guy here. You can see this is the heating element, it's ceramic, and then inside here is gonna be your tip insert. And this one here is a large conical tip. So, this is an older style soldering iron, although it does have a temperature regulation, which I'm not completely for sure if there's a feedback for that temperature regulation or if it's just, it just attenuates the amount of voltage going to the heating element. I'm not really sure, but that is the older style. This is my beloved Milwaukee, which is good for field use, but for general rework, it's just much too heavy and cumbersome. You can see if I unscrew it, same exact thing. There's the heating element. It's very delicate. You gotta be very careful with it. And this one here has a small conical tip. So this one here will insert over the heating element. Screws down and you're good to go. So the problem with these kind of tips is there is very poor feedback, if at all, to the temperature regulation. This Milwaukee here, I don't believe has temperature regulation, but it what it does have is it's got this heating element, which has to, through direct induction, has to heat up this tip, or conduction, rather. <laughs> so it uses conduction to heat up the tip, kind of indirectly, I guess. It's good for field service, it is what it is, but this is a modern style um, soldering iron. And you can see uh, it's got kind of a, a thin pin head here. You can see other heating elements, other tips for other soldering irons. There's a whole variety of them here. But take a look and notice something. See how it's got all these contacts, electrical contacts back here? It not only has the electrical contacts for the heating element, because the heating element is inside this tip. But there's also a thermistor inside the tip. So it directly heats and it directly monitors the heated temperature right here all in one. So if something goes wrong with this guy, all you do, like this one here, is a bad tip. It does heat up, but it immediately throws a thermistor error as soon as it's plugged in. So if I want to change it out, you just pull it out, Take your next one, push it in, and you go. Just like that. It's that easy. So compared to these other ones, it's actually very safe too. Because on these ones here, you get a uh, thermal barrier that you're going to grab onto. So sometimes they're plastic, sometimes they're silicone. And you grab onto the tip, you pull it out, you stick your cold tip in, and as soon as it recognizes the thermistor, it starts heating this guy to your preset limit immediately. Very nice. Now this guy here, the old style, it has to heat this guy up. And if you saturate this guy, like let's say you cool the tip or you have a large ground plane and it starts uh, heat sinking away from this tip, it is much slower to react and to heat the tip back up as this style. So these ones here are the preferred type of soldering iron. Uh, this one here comes from my Quick TS-1200A, and these tips, all these various ones right here, these ones come from a HACO unit, and you can see somebody really went off on the amount of tips that they have, and you can see a lot of the tips are not in the best quality, so these should be probably wire brushed to clean up, and then tested, and if anything, if the contacts are corroded, they need to be thrown out. But uh, you can see there's a variety of different tips. You really don't need all these tips. All that I normally use are the small chisel, 
And uh, also, I like to use this guy. This is a three millimeter oval. You can see it right there. This is one of my favorite because when you touch solder, the solder ball likes to collect right on that flat. See that? So the solder likes to sit right here on the tip, which means you can transfer it over connections and stuff way easier. Conical tips, no matter how good they are, solder just does not normally like to sit on conicals. There's not a lot of um, thermal mass there, so it's really easy to sink the heat away from really fine tips. Whereas this oval or the, the wedge, the style right here just seems to work really well. It's got a reasonable amount of thermal mass. It's only a three millimeter, but this is easily one of my favorite tips. So guys, if you're looking for a soldering iron, these ones here might be okay if you're getting started. But if you really wanna work on some good boards, maybe some larger PCBs, you need a higher wattage soldering iron, one that's 70 watts or more and get some good tips and keep your tips maintained. All right, these ones here, you can see that they're a little dirty. This one is tinned and when I tinned it, you know, it cooled down naturally and it gave it that charcoal look. Once it heats back up, I'll clean it off and I'm ready to rock and roll. So tin your tips, take care of them. If you have corrosion on your tips, like these ones here, think about getting replacements because I probably wouldn't trust these for serious work. Anyway guys, that's just a real quick video on the various types of soldering irons, what to look out for. I highly suggest any soldering iron that's got the integrated thermistor with the heating element, it's gonna change the game. Once you go to one of these, you'll never wanna go back to one of the other style, unless you're doing field repairs, to which then you take whatever you can get. Anyway, thanks for watching guys.